Institute of Digestive Disease uh, at the Chinese University of Hong Kong uh, um, really have a very solid infrastructure for research. In fact, you know, we are almost you know, 10 years old um, now. It was um, created in 2006 by uh, Professor Joseph Song. Uh, and we work very closely with our translational unit, which um, is the state key laboratory of digestive disease. In fact, our laboratory is the only one, you know, FD um, approved state key laboratory of digestive disease and the clinical trial center is also FDA approved for digestive disease and uh, liver disease as well. Our center is the only accredited center by the China FDA to carry out clinical research in chronic hepatitis. So we have actually more than 30 clinical trials in the past 10 years ranging from phase 1 study to phase 4 studies. We've started our liver research since the late 90s. At that time, viral hepatitis B is a key area of research. So we're interested in both molecular virology research and also research on natural history. And then later, we have medicine for hepatitis. Then we work in a lot of clinical uh, trials and also on liver fibrosis, XCC related to hepatitis B. If you look at the lifestyle, of Hong Kong Chinese. We are moving towards the westerners. And in a lot of disease pattern, we're also moving towards America, Europe, Australia. After 10 years of uh, development, the fatty liver research platform in our unit is very mature now. And now we can see that really it's true. Fatty liver is getting more and more common in Hong Kong, also in Asian patients. Uh, the awareness of fatty liver disease is increasing. We start to see increasing number of Nash-related cirrhosis and liver cancer, and we also start to see new drugs for fatty liver uh, treatment. So we're really excited about this era, and we're looking forward to further working in this area. Colorectal cancer is definitely a rising problem in Asia, uh, especially in countries such as China, Japan, and Korea. Uh, let me take an example of Hong Kong. Uh, it has already been the most common cancer among men and women uh, in the last two years. The public is uh, not very well aware of uh, this alarming trend and there was nothing uh, in the public health to uh, educate people how to prevent and how to make early diagnosis of colorectal cancer. So what we did was, uh, first of all, we studied the incidence of the cancer and what kind of people are more likely to develop colorectal cancer in Hong Kong and in Asia. And then we start to test out uh, various methods including FIT and colonoscopy. So we uh, published two consensus paper on how Asia should deal with this rising trend of colorectal cancer. Uh, the paper includes uh, some suggested method of screening and we, uh, we make the uh, consensus statement more suitable for uh, Asian countries which are economically very different from Western countries. Well, because ANSYS and aspirin, they are the most widely used drugs worldwide. Elderly people, they are having arthritis problems. At the same time, they have this coronary artery disease requiring aspirin. So that's the reason why we are seeing more and more NSAID and aspirin houses. In Hong Kong, our group at the Chinese University of Hong Kong have been doing large-scale randomized controlled trials looking into novel treatment strategies for the treatment and prevention of NSAID and aspirin houses, not only in healthy, healthy volunteers, but also among high-risk patients. We believe our findings uh, will formulate important treatment guidelines for uh, a lot of practitioners, both locally and internationally. At our institution, we're actually applying endoscopy in uh, innovation in the several aspects. The first aspect is the, for diagnosis of uh, early GI cancers, where we have been applying uh, novel imaging technologies, including narrowband imaging and also endocytoscopy to recognize this lesion. We are also applying therapeutic uh, procedures and new tools for treatment of uh, early GI cancer and that include uh, the application of uh, endoscopic submucosal dissection, per oral endoscopic myotomy and also submucosal tunnel endoscopic resections. 
and we are also pioneering new innovation in endoscopy that include um, the performance of uh, endoscopic suturing and also um, new uh, therapeutic tools like uh, robotic endo endoscopy for treatment of early GI cancers. So I believe that endoscopy is not without complication and also the yield of diagnostic endoscopy is directly correlating with the experience and also the skills of the endoscopist. So it's very important for us to provide high quality training for uh, local Hong Kong endoscopists and also regional endoscopists in order to help uphold the standard of endoscopy and the quality of the endoscopic uh, uh, surface that we provide for our patients in Hong Kong, China and also in Asia. The training of, of overseas fellows is one of the goals of IDD. We really want to provide good postgraduate education not only to our local fellow but also to overseas fellows. I think as an endoscopist uh, you always want to try to broaden your clinical experience and as mentioned before uh, there is uh, different uh, um, disease epidemiology between in the east and the west and so uh, for me uh, to come and gain um, uh, experience in management of diseases that may not be seen in the west um, uh, is very helpful. Now, when you come to a new uh, city and country, there's also opportunities to learn about different healthcare systems and how um, uh, their delivery impacts um, uh, uh, medicine and so forth. Clearly, our research should be patient-oriented. So we really want to know what's the best treatment and the best disease outcome for our patients because um, Chinese or Asians may be different from the West. We know that the genetic makeup is different. So we are focusing on our patients, looking at them longitudinally over the next five to 10 years to see how we can improve the um, treatment or the management of these um, patients.